What's up YouTube, this is 4th Star TCG, and today I have my Worlds Recap video. Um, basically, just going to tell you guys about everything that I did at the uh, Pokemon Worlds uh, this past weekend in Boston. It was a ton of fun, I absolutely loved it. Uh, would definitely consider traveling to go to Worlds. Uh, I do live around Boston, so it uh, wasn't too much of a uh, issue for me to make the trip to Worlds. But um, yeah, it was just amazing. I love the uh, love the atmosphere. Everything was just so awesome. So I uh, would definitely uh, be looking to go again. So uh, as you guys can see here, we have the beautiful Worlds playmat. Uh, I was I did not compete in Worlds, uh, not really, not in the official tournament. But I did go just to have some fun. And this is the playmat that they were selling. It looks really cool. You got the sort of pirate Pikachu here, and then Mega Latios over there, Mega Salamence, and every, everything sort of like a pirate theme, which is cool. Um, so basically, first off, I'll show you like all the cool stuff I got, uh, not cards. I did pick up the, don't know if this will fit on the camera, but I did end up picking up the World's T-shirt. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, the angle for this video is different, just so I can show off all this awesome stuff. But yeah, we got the world's t-shirt there, Pikachu, of course. Now on the back you have all of the uh, countries that are competing, or most of them at least. Um, and this uh, world's is really a um, a world tournament. Like it's not just people from the U.S. Uh, I played in like TCG Open Gaming. I played against people from France, from Quebec, uh, from Japan, and everything. And it was it was really cool. Um, just to see all of that stuff and to be able to play against people who had all these different language cards is <laughs> it was kind of weird for me to see uh people playing with Japanese cards because I mean I normally as associate those with like just collecting but just like seeing people play with the Japanese full arts and stuff like that it's it's kind of like oh what are you doing those are so collectible but um that's <laughs> that's probably only uh the way I look at it is of course the Japanese look at it uh for playing um, so yeah, some other cool stuff I got. I haven't taken these out of their packages yet, but I did pick up, uh, Team Magma and Team Aqua Socks. Uh, I saw these and I was just like, sorry about the crinkling, but I saw these and I was just like, okay, I can't pass these up. These are way too cool, um, to not, to not buy. <laughs> so I did get those. And I mean, the prices at the Worlds were, I mean, like, they were high. Um, those socks were like, 13 bucks the playmat was like 25 it was really expensive but i mean i assume that's probably what you're uh what you are what you're gonna get when you go to a world's world championships uh, i did play my mega Gallade deck you guys can see it here i did play that in the um just like the open tcg tournaments um nothing really special happened there um it was like just regular eight person tournaments like they'd get eight people They'd throw you all together, they'd make matchups, and then whoever won the first matchup, you that would uh, take the winners of the first, you'd pair everybody up, you'd take the winners of the first game, uh, so then you had four people, you'd put them uh, put them together, and um, yeah, so and then you just sort of, it was like a bracket tournament thing, um, and the winners would get prize packs, which was fun, and you didn't even have to pay to get in, um, so it was really nice. I, I didn't do very, I mean, my Everyone, I mean, playing a actual deck uh, in person is a lot different than playing online and stuff. On on online, a lot of people try out like cheeky decks and stuff like that. Um, but in real in real life, the decks that people play, they're not they're not messing around. Nobody's playing a cheeky deck. Um, I saw a ton of Night March. There was so much Night March. Um, also saw a lot of Metal, um, a lot of Aegislash, Metal Rayquaza. Um, yeah, I, I saw some uh, Ninetales Raichu um, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I, I actually, my Night March matchups were not very good. Um, I did not do very <laughs> well against Night March. I did, I made it to the, uh, to the finals once, so I was in the top two um, of those, of those uh, eight. I, I did that once. I made it to the second round a couple times. Uh, but I never really progressed past there except for that one time where I made it to the finals. Um, and I played uh, played that Ninetales Raichu matchup in the uh, in the second round. 
and I, I ended up beating it. And the reason I beat it was because I was playing the bats instead of Fortress. Uh, my Mega Gallade deck, I was able to spread the damage out a lot. And then just, uh, I think I took three prizes in one turn, uh, which was really nice. My opponent, I think, was down to two prizes and I had three. And I just uh, took the game in one turn, which is really what Mega Gallade is designed to do, which is fantastic. Uh, so now I will go on to a lot of the, a couple cards that I picked up at Worlds. Um, not much. I didn't do a ton of trading and buying. I spent a, the majority of the money that I brought on like stuff like the Playmat and stuff like that. But uh, from the Roaring Skies, I did buy some Roaring Skies packs. I got some Roaring Skies prize packs as well. Notable pulls from there. I got a uh, Salamence Reverse Hollow, which is pretty cool. Regular Hollow Togekiss, and then I was really happy about this, a Mega Rayquaza EX, the uh, colorless type, which was really fun. This is, I think it's in pretty good condition. I wouldn't say it's a PSA 10, but it is very nice. Ugh, I was really, really annoyed because I, uh, I actually met a guy who had a absolutely perfect full art Mega Rayquaza EX, and he would not sell or trade it to me, um, which, and it wasn't like a... 10 year old kid or anything it was like a middle-aged man um and i was like oh i was so annoyed because uh, i totally would have bought that off of him it was it was as close to a guaranteed psa 10 on an english card as i've seen in a long time also just picked up this cool polyrath from neo discovery i got this uh interesting glaceon which is a canadian exclusive advent calendar promo I don't know the set it's from, maybe Great Encounters or something like that, but it has this snowflake stamp, which, I mean, it's not much, but just looking at all of the set cards, it's really awesome, especially when you have stuff like ice types like Glaceon with that artwork. Uh, it's just beautiful. And then I also picked up a Regirock Hollow, which I got signed by Shady Penguin. Um, I met a lot of awesome people at Worlds. Uh, I only took a couple pictures of uh, the people that I met. But I will throw those pictures up right now if I can find a way to edit them in. If you are just seeing a Regirock Hollow here, you know, I couldn't find a way to edit them in. But I did take a couple pictures with uh, awesome people like Shady Penguin. I met Renee Collects, which was awesome. Um, I didn't do a lot of, like, people hunting. Uh, I know Jordan Japan was there, but I really, I couldn't find him. <laughs> I did look for him, but I couldn't find him. Uh, I don't think he was at Worlds at the same time that I was. But, um, Yeah. And then the main thing that I'm super happy that I got is, you guys all ready for this? Ha! Charizard, Gold Star, Japanese, let me get the focus, I don't know if we can, but trust me, it's first edition. Um, this is, I'd say, a near mint condition card, you can kind of see a little edge wear along the, um, along the backs there but i i don't know if i'm going to be grading this who knows probably i mean i'd be happy with like a six or something um six or higher as it is really nicely centered um maybe it would maybe it would get a seven i think i might grade it put like minimum grade seven or something like that um there is some i don't know if you guys can see it i'd hate to take this card out of the sleeve so i'm just going to be very careful there there is some like indentations along the Charizard's wing there and there is a little nick at the top there so I don't know what uh, PSA grade this card would get but I really wanted to pick it up because it's a freaking Charizard gold star first edition Japanese um, probably I now have the both Charizard and Muse stars from uh, um, what is it what is it furthest ends of offense and defense and uh, hopefully I will eventually complete that set I have the most, I have the hardest cards from that set to get, despite like the commons and uncommons and the hollows, or I wouldn't say maybe the hardest, maybe the most expensive cards from that set now. So it was really awesome that I was able to, uh, to find uh, this card and it was just, <laughs> I was blown away with this. It was just like a random dude in his trade bindery, like a random Japanese Charizard gold star. Um, so I did trade for this really happy that I didn't have to buy it, which is awesome as well. Uh, so really not sure whether this will be going off to PSA or maybe just thrown in my gold star collection. Um, I've been really jacking it up on the gold stars lately. Uh, I figure now is the time to collect them. Um, 
all of the older cards, that are, especially the gold stars, really going up in price now. So um, I figure now is the time to spend the money, even if it's a lot of money, uh, or make the trades to get these cards. So really happy that I was able to pick up uh, pick up this stuff. So uh, yeah, just ama I had an amazing time at Worlds. I would definitely recommend it to anyone who uh, who wants to go. It's just, I mean, like I I pulled I pulled these cards. It's so fun to do that uh, around people. I got these like special exclusive cards that you really can't find anywhere else. Um, and I mean, like I wouldn't even know about this uh, this Glaceon if I hadn't gone to Worlds. And then there's just like, I mean, the trade binders people have are fantastic just to, especially for a PSA card collector like me, where I can go and actually take a look at the condition of the cards firsthand and say, okay, this is what I expect. This is what grade I expect this card to get. This is what I'll trade for it. I should pick this up. I should not pick this up and stuff like that. Um, then of course, just to meet awesome people like Shady Penguin. Uh, he did an amazing job commentating worlds. Uh, everybody who was, uh, who was commentating did an amazing job. And uh, of course, congratulations to all of the world's winners. I'm super happy that uh, that Archie's Blastoise won uh, won Masters. That was a deck that um, I was just really rooting for because I feel like it takes such an uh, such a insane amount of skill as a uh, Pokemon TCG player to be able to run that deck and make it work. So uh, massive uh, congratulations, to Jacob Ben Wagner. And everybody who uh, who uh, played in the Worlds tournament as players, uh, and all the other champions as well. I don't know their names off the top of my head, but uh, congratulations to them. I highly doubt any single one of them will be ever watching this video, but uh, my congratulations go out to them. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and stick around for more videos.